So I am Brian Spilagato, Vice President of Open Treat Map US. Uh, and uh, today I'd like to share with you all my story of uh, founding the OSM Americana Maps Dial and, uh, you know, my experience kind of going through that and in other projects uh, where I've uh, both started and contributing. Um, so I want to offer that uh, starting a project from the ground up is something that you can do, um, as well as uh, contribute to one that exists. And so i uh, talk about both the good and the bad and the, you know, the pitfalls and the, uh, the triumphs uh, along that journey. So uh, what's an Americana? So for those of you guys that are, uh, are not familiar, uh, it is our American uh, map style. Uh, so there's a link below. Uh, if you're on YouTube, we'll, we'll drop it in the, uh, in the description. Uh, but uh, it's our attempt to make a sort of an atlas based, uh, you know, like AAA and Man McNally in the old days uh, kind of map style uh, specific to the US. Uh, so in addition to Americana, I'll also mention a few other projects. Uh, so one at Map Library, which is uh, a library that we use for that uh, rendering uh, that uh, uh, displayed vector tiles uh, in a user's web browser, uh, which is also an open source project that uh, had an interesting beginning. Uh, so River Modernization was a tagging campaign that I launched with uh, a number of uh, folks on uh, Discord, uh, which uh, is really interesting. And I want to also mention the Trail Stewardship Initiative, which is an open treat map uh, US uh, advocacy uh, effort that we're uh, working uh, with the federal government uh, to improve trail marking and trail tagging uh, for sustainable use of the land. So all, all different types of projects, but all have uh, very similar elements of how they get started, uh, how they get sustained, how they how they are successful, and so as I thought about uh, my journey, I came up with uh, a set of recipes for what a thriving open source community project uh, tend to look like. So first off, they all usually tend to start off with something that looks or feels like a legitimate grievance. And I'll talk about the different types of grievances that tend to cause people to start these projects. Uh, the successful ones all generally have rapid communications for the participants to, uh, you know, work together uh, quickly. They've all gone through a bootstrapping process where, uh, you know, someone took, you know, the initial idea of the grievance and, and turned it into a functional community where people are participating and, and producing something cool. Uh, I want to talk about marketing, how you get your the word out uh, on your project and, and why that's important. And lastly, I want to anchor on the culture of participation that is necessary uh, for a community project to be successful. So I want to start with my journey and how I uh, came to launch the map style. And so one day there was a posting on one of the mailing lists that uh, was a call for new contributors to OSM Carto, which is the standard tile layer that you see at OpenTreatMap.org, and said, "Hey, contributors, welcome. We've got lots of stuff to work on. You know, we've got a bunch of issue tickets that are listed as good first-time tickets. So if you've ever been interested in working on a map style, uh, you know, come, you know, come check it out. Something like that. So from memory, I couldn't find the initial call to action. Um, so I downloaded the source code. Uh, so it, Carto uses a system called GitHub. If you're not familiar with it, it's a, uh, it's a very common uh, sort of online source control repository that is uh, used by quite a few uh, open source projects. And so download the source code. Uh, tried to get it to run, couldn't get it to run, figured out why it wasn't running. And then my first contribution was the fix to make it run on Windows, which I was running at the time. Uh, so both of the other contributors used Linux, and so they didn't notice anything was wrong. And so uh, so I put that fix in, submitted it. And then first response was, hey, thanks for figuring it out and submitting a PR. And so for those of you that aren't uh, coders, uh, PR stand for pull request. And uh, it's uh, that's that means a, a source code contribution to so CPR that's uh, that's contributing software. So at this point, I'm thinking, hey, this is pretty good, right? So I submitted my first fix. You know, they like it. Uh, you know, I'm getting along, providing value, like awesome, thumbs up, right? And then, hey, thanks, thanks for the PR. It's quite helpful. If you're interested in contributing further, we have a list of good first issues. Da 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 da. 
right? So at this point, I'm thinking, hey, this is this is going to work out. I, I can contribute here. Uh, I can get my hand dirty. I can learn about actually making maps rather than just mapping, uh, which was something I was you know sort of excited to do. And so uh, then I looked through that list of good first issues and I discovered dog parks. Okay, so uh, in the middle is uh, is the current and even at the time rendering of dog parks. And so you got this kind of light green thing with the paw print pattern in it. And then there's like the paw print icon for the whole dog park itself. And so the uh, what the ticket described was that the paw print pattern fill was too distracting and it would be better to just get rid of the pattern and just have it be just a plain light green background with the paw print icon and, and the text and nothing else. Uh, you know, when that intersected with other features, it was uh, it was sort of cluttered and confusing. So I said, okay, this is something. This is something I could probably figure out, right? So I just have to find where in the code it put the pattern in, and I just have to take the pattern out, right? So this this seemed like really simple. Like, hey, okay, it's what you need help on, no problem. So I put a pull request together. I sent it in, and first response I got was, "Thanks, that's a significant improvement." Okay, so so far so good. And uh, the uh, contributor that actually put that response in was the one that opened the ticket in the first place, uh, but it generally seemed to be accepted from, uh, you know, from the text of the original issue. Uh, so then, uh, so then finally, I got, uh, you know, probably some few hours later, got a response from one of the maintainers and uh, in sort of GitHub terminology, uh, a maintainer is someone who is allowed to accept or reject uh, code changes. Okay, so the next response I got from one of the maintainers was very long, uh, and I'm only going to read the first sentence, and it goes, you are probably not consciously aware of this, but this is kind of the last step in a sequence of highly questionable design choices, most of which were made without consensus among the maintainers, and which, according to what this PR suggested, would lead to rendering dog parks identical to playgrounds, an idea that seems ridiculous as you subscribe to the paradigm that differences in color should respect differences in function and purpose for the target map user, which, by the way, massively supports the stereotype that OSM is a project of male tech nerds without kids, and who view caring for the kid and caring for a dog is similar in nature, as well as the view that this project is dominated by the narrow perspective of an urban European slash North American temperate climate clientele with their specific views of animal keeping. Leisure equals dog park is still the only feature specific to animal keeping we have in this dial so far, and we render it in a green color, implying vegetation as if globally dogs are always kept slash walked in vegetated areas. And so needless to say, after uh, that response, I did not know what to think. And so uh, sort of a, a, a discussion ensued with, you know, more words that were not very decipherable. And uh, ultimately, uh, that same maintainer ended with uh, the above comments are not a negative review, they're meant to provide useful historic context to the change that PR proposes, I will, however, not positively review or, mer or merge this change until someone can convince me of its merits. Now, at this point, uh, I'm kind of scratching my head saying, hey, what the heck is going on here? And that PR sat uh, with no other activity from April to July when the same maintainer says, this change requires review by someone other than me. And then in August, the next version was released. And then in September, I gave up, closed the PR and said, somebody else can work on this. And so uh, at this point, uh, my experience in trying to contribute to an open source project went from really good to uh, really bad uh, very quickly. And so I went off to Slack to air my grievances. And uh, so my comment was clearly, this is a waste of time. And so uh, Min, who uh, at the time was the OSM US president, said, hey, you know, we're, we're planning to put together a homegrown render at some point, you know, maybe you'd like to, you know, help us out, you know, at some point in the future when we redo the website, right? Uh, and so my response, like three seconds later, was to uh, launch a new Slack channel and uh, solicit people to uh, start working on the project because uh, I didn't feel like we had any need to wait for that to happen. And Quincy, who's on this uh, is who's on this call, is actually working on that new website, which which is gonna come out soon and it's gonna be really cool. But um yeah, so that was uh that was sort of how it all started. And that was my legitimate grievance. Um but this wasn't just my 
sort of singular complaint with trying to play with another map style and uh, you know not get along with the people there. Uh, so there's also the this idea I have of a community grievance, right? And so uh, back in 2014, uh, men actually this is this is men as well on uh, GitHub uh, opened a ticket uh, suggesting that it would be a good idea if the standard tile layer. Uh, had highway shields, right? So like the little red and blue interstate shields and all the other uh, state and federal uh, highway that we have all over the country, uh, you know, basically those things, um, those are things that we expect as American to be on our maps. And the fact that it's not present on the standard higher layer is, uh, so, you know, something for, you know, as Americans, we feel like, like, hey, this, you know, this map is so international that it doesn't make sense here anymore. And so we feel that the lack of this really important feature is, you know, something that we really desire uh, as a community, right? So that, that sort of community grievance. Uh, and uh, so we've, uh, we've passed its ninth birthday. It's uh, still incomplete, although there has been quite a bit of work done on a series of intermediate steps to build the technology to be able to do it uh, but it, it's still open and you know the fact that we don't have that is one of the reasons why people were so excited uh, about uh, the americana project and and uh, becoming involved All right and so just one of this is one of the comments from a different maintainer on the uh, on that dial that said, hey, it's simply quite ugly, which is, you know, just give you the sense of, you know, how people outside of our community didn't really understand the importance uh, to our community, and, and thus it, you know, didn't really get the, the traction on a global scale that it, uh, you know, did here, um, here in the U.S. All right, so uh, another type of uh, grievance is sort of real world ad advocacy. And so this was a, um, a mappy hour a couple of years ago, a lady from the National Park Service came and gave a wonderful talk about um, uh, trails and specifically map application users were uh, following trails that they found on apps that were sourced from open street map. And they were taking them to places they weren't supposed to be and, and causing damages, uh, ecological damage and uh, harming sensitive sites and those sorts of things, you know, because somebody had mapped them, uh, even though the park service, you know, like had the trail closed or, or that sort of thing. And so uh, a lot of people really care about, you know, good stewardship of the environment um, and hiking, uh, you know, so all these sorts of themes uh, intersected with a number of people that were very interested. And so that started a working group uh, that talked about trail tagging. You know, we had a bunch of meetings with folks from the National Park Service and from application developers. And so the sort of real world impact of the stuff we're working on uh, can be a very big motivator. Uh, so how about a corporate grievance? So I mentioned Map Libra in the beginning. And so Map Libra was based on a piece of software called Mapbox GL. Uh, which is its predecessor, and it was open source, and so the Mapbox kind of managed it, and they had some engineers that worked on it, and then one day they put out a new version and uh, made it uh, made a copyright instead of open source, and so that's something that upset a lot of people. So a lot of uh, developers spent uh, quite a bit of time contributing to something that was open source, and they thought would always be open source, and then when it uh, suddenly wasn't, well, it's still actually open source, but it's you know, now copyright open source. And so it, it can't be used without paying Mapbox a fee. And so a bunch of folks got together and uh, started MapLibre, which is a pre 2.0 uh, fork of Mapbox GL, you know, because uh, they had that desire for that, that piece of software and that community that they had built. Uh, how about the naysayer? And I'm not going to. I'm not going to read the uh, I'm not going to read the mean comments, and you can find more in the mailing list. Uh, so it's possible that uh, one person uh, can be so caustic that uh, it inspires people to act in the opposite direction. Uh, so anyone that has a toddler or a teenager probably knows uh, what that's like. Um, but uh, this is this is probably the grievance that uh, launched a group of Discord mappers to uh, globally eliminate uh, an old style of river tagging, which is you know obscure, but so the community works. Uh, so how about how about that phrase "hold my beer," right? So that idea that something's 
either never been done before or can't be done or is too hard. So someone that feels they can do something that someone else says can't be done is incredibly motivating. Um, so on the forums at some point, someone posted about uh, vector tiles and there seemed to be this belief, I don't know where it came from, that you know vector tiles are this way future technology that are super hard and it'll 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 never become reality. Um, and so so this, this person posted on the forums and said there's no public vector tile server. There may, may never be. And you know, we'd been running one for a number of months at that point. And so that was my hold my bare moment to say, here you go. Here's a public tile server. Um so yeah, real motivating. Uh, so another thing that's never been done before. So a little uh, a map clip on the right. Uh, so that road, uh, which is uh, is it in Michigan, uh, somewhere in the Great Lakes area, but it's a, it's a confluence of uh, three. It's a concurrency of three different routes. Right, so the interstate, the U.S. Highway, and the Great Lake Circle Tour uh, route there. And what's interesting about that concurrency is the shields are in a snake formation. So they they follow the path of the road. Uh, and uh, that technique of displaying concurrent shields has never been done before in uh, an open source project, uh, an open source map, and we were the first to do it. And so it was it was very exciting to be a part of you know, doing that that thing that no one else has done. Right? And, and there's others that we've done on the Americana project, like, uh, you know, client language support, to semicolon processing, uh, the ability to show off first are, is pretty awesome. Okay, so the second ingredient, uh, so I talked about the five ingredient. The second one is rapid communications. And so in my experience, chat, for some reason, seemed to work way better than uh, prose, you know, long form communications, uh, in particular, um, medium media where you can edit your words afterwards if you make a typo tend to promote uh, more rapid communications so uh, in an email i can't go back and fix a typo so i spend a lot of time copy editing and so in in chat and like slack or discord uh, i can go in and i can edit if i make make a mistake uh, and so uh, i don't feel compelled to hold off on on what i'm about to say to you know, make sure it's perfect, and so that you know that little change actually makes a big difference in speed. Uh, also, emoji reactions are actually very helpful. Um, so I might not have time to compose a thoughtful response to something, but if I can just press a button and emoji react to something, uh, that lets the person who wrote the original comment get feedback a lot quicker. Uh, and it's important to have back and front channels, right? And so your front channel. And again, I'm, I'm speaking from the position of you know, the founder of a project, right? Which, which anybody can do. The front channel is you and the public and anybody who wanders in the door. The back channel is just you and the close insiders on the project um, that are, are the inner circle, right? So in a, um, in a software project, it would be the maintainer teams uh, on GitHub. Uh, so you need that place for sort of controversial discussions and sort of filling out the group before you talk in public. Um, and you should avoid the back channel as much as possible, but you should absolutely have a back channel that you can use uh, to talk through things that you don't really want to expose uh, just yet. All right, so Slack, Discord, uh, Matrix, which talk to Discord, Telegram, those are all places where there are open street map uh, communities that uh, communicate on chat. All right, so the third ingredient is bootstrapping. So uh, in my experience, every successful project starts with one single uh, dedicated founder. Okay, so doping treat map, it's Steve C. Uh, so for the Trails Initiative, that was Diane Fritz, our current president. Uh, for Map Library, it was it was Jury. So you look at any successful project, uh, you know, Linux, it was Linus Travals. All right, there's always that one dedicated founder that put in all that work in the beginning. And at first, you do have to do all the work, right? And it's in you doing the work to get it started that shows other potential contributors that it's something you want to become a part of. And that's your goal, to allow other people to contribute. That's how you know you've been successful, right? Uh, in that bootstrapping process, it's really important that there's a way for people to see progress. Uh, now in a map, 
project that's rather straightforward, right? So people make a change, they see it in the map. Okay, something that's not a map project, you need to find some other way to show that progress. So uh, in a tagging campaign, you can use something like tag info. Uh, in an advocacy campaign, um, you know, you've got to be more creative. But but progress is really important. That's how uh, people see their value and are motivated to continue uh, contributing. Uh, the first people that become involved, that they become your inner circle. Right. And so make sure you recognize who those initial people are so you can bring them on the inside. OK. And how you know you've been successful in bootstrapping is when you're not needed anymore. Right. When the project runs itself, when nobody's looking to you to make decisions and they can do it by themselves, they, they feel that empowerment. That's how you know you've succeeded. OK. So I talked about showing your work. These are some uh, initial clips from the uh, start of Americana and the beginning of the Slack channel. And, and I knew nothing when I started. I mean, literally, I, I could barely spell vector tile. I uh, didn't know what the technology options are. I could sort of code JavaScript, but not really. And so I was completely reliant on other people to help me and give me hints and throw suggestions out. And in the beginning, that was just me doing all the work and other people throwing out suggestions, right? And so the first time I got a vector tile server running, I posted a screenshot like, hey, I think I got something working. What do you guys think? Right, oh, look, we got, a, got some roads and shields on a map. Oh, look, I'm doing highway exits. Oh, hey, uh, even when it doesn't work right. So this was some screenshots of something not right, or like the shields were landing on top of each other. What do you guys think, right? And you see the little thread underneath with like 50 replies where we, you know, the discussion continues. So those little things that you're dribbling out uh, give people something to talk about, build excitement and motivation. And then one day, whoop, wrong way, one day someone says, hey, I did a thing, I contributed a piece, right? And that moment is, uh, is so exciting, right? And so after, a significant amount of time of me flailing around badly trying to make a map, people started to jump up and, and contribute a piece. And that was very exciting. Uh, so tagging campaign example. Um, so this was a tag that we virtually eliminated from the globe over, a, you know, like a, a year period, basically when the when the steep part of that, that graph uh, start ticking down, but people would uh, people would refresh this every day, looking to see how many pixels down the line had gone since the previous day. Uh, you know, so it's important that they see their work. Uh, one of the folks on Discord made a bunch of stats that they updated, and so people get real excited when the new weekly pie chart showing where all the old river tagging was in the world came out, and they saw it shift. And I mean, you know, those. Those things sound silly, but being able to see your progress is really important. Fourth ingredient, marketing. Okay, so you're nothing if nobody knows what you're doing. So marketing is your way to show the world that everything is alive and exciting. Uh, it's not just outward facing, it's inward facing, right? And so when someone that's working on the project with you sees the marketing, uh, sees the thing that they're working on with you, get lots of press and people be excited about it, that excites your team and makes them want to keep contributing more, right? So, so marketing goes both ways, right? And so in order to market, that means you've got to share your successes uh, and you know get them out there. And I'm going to talk a bit about, about uh, creating linkable content, all right? So each time you market your product, your project, you put stuff out there uh, that creates a thing that can be linked into another thing and can be mentioned in a discussion and one thing linked to another, linked to another. And before long, you've built this uh, whole, whole web of information about your project. Um, and I would like to end my marketing with a call to action to say, hey, contributors, welcome. We're always looking for more people on the team to build the map. The map will probably never be done. Um, but if you haven't been interested in uh, being part of a map style, then, um, you know, please come help out and uh, I'll put the link in the chat when I'm done with this so you guys can uh, get to it as well because that call to action goes to you all as well. Uh, and your success criteria here is when everybody knows about the projects, right? So when there's no one in the open treat maps world that doesn't know uh, what Americana is or hasn't at least heard about it, uh, that's how you know you've been successful. Uh, so examples of marketing. Um, so we have our annual conference every year. Uh, so last year in Tucson, I uh, made a presentation 
uh, talking about the creation of the American map style. Um, so this year there'll be one by Min who talks about uh, you know our language support, which is pretty interesting. And so uh, those sort of speaking opportunities are great opportunities to talk about what you've been doing and build excitement. Uh, when I did the river modernization, same thing uh, as a mappy hour, uh, just like this one where I talked about river tagging. And again, that was you know building excitement, interest, uh, and also building legitimacy. So each time you do one of these, it makes the thing you're doing more legitimate. And that's important, especially uh, for, uh, you know, think that they might have disagreements, right? So tagging, tagging is always controversial. Uh, when you're getting invited to do mappy hours about it, that makes it, you know, sort of more mainstream and, and less controversial. And so those opportunities are very, very important. Uh, OSM US blog post. And so uh, OSM US is not the only organization that uh, allows guest blog posts. And so uh, look for those. And something similar to blog posts are open treat map diary entries, which is also another place to uh, advertise your stuff. Uh, you know, the, the Awesome Weekly, they pick up a lot of stuff, but you can submit directly to them. So these are all opportunities to, to get the word out there. And so use new features that you develop uh, as, uh, as sort of points at which you can do that marketing. Uh, the forums, of course, are a great place. Um, so this is when I did my year in review, and it's really kind of nicely formatted, lots of pictures in it, uh, really a uh, really nice opportunity. And as, as as you look, you know, down below the, the copy there, uh, there's a lot of links, and those links link to other places where the project's mentioned. And when I talk about building linkable content, it allows you to put lots of blue links uh, in stuff like this. And so it creates a, you know, a whole persona around the project, right? And so this is this is one of my favorite places to, uh, to market. So in GitHub, uh, you can mention other issues and you can actually mention issues in other repositories. And each time you do that, it drops a link in the feed of the issue ticket and so in the in the in men's pictorial wrote shields uh, GitHub issue, in an Americana issue, he mentioned this issue and you know in passing and talking about some other issue, and you know that drops a mention this issue link, right? And so um, mentioning other tickets and other repositories helps make other developer communities aware of other projects that are out there that are related and may be interesting for them to know about. Okay, and, uh, and the last ingredient is building that culture of participation. And so I gave uh, I gave some examples in the beginning of uh, bad cultures of participation, uh, but uh, this is what a good culture of participation looks like. One, it should be obvious: treat people well. Uh, if you don't treat people well, they're just not going to want to hang around. Uh, and, and the other thing that may be less obvious uh, when you found a project is you need to learn how to seed control. Okay, and so you're going to go in with a certain vision, and when you're the only person working on it, your vision is the vision. But as other people start uh, start being a part of it, uh, really take the opportunity to step back and let other people start to make the important decisions, and and ultimately it will stop becoming your project and it will start becoming our project. And that means sometimes you're going to have to let go of some things that are not that important and let other people make some of the key decisions. Okay, uh, respond quickly. Right, so taken in April, gave up in September, that's no good. So if it's a new contributor, I try to get something in response to them that day. Uh, so if I can bridge something quickly, I will, uh, because that's valuable and that makes people more willing to contribute more in the future if we respond quickly. Uh, don't demand perfection. And so uh, you, know, you gotta get to an understanding of what good enough looks like. Um, and so my rule is that if it's better than what was there before, then that's good enough to merge. And so uh, I try not to go more than one or two rounds of requesting changes before I say, okay, it's good enough. And, um, you know, always give the opportunity to say, hey, uh, this other thing should be fixed as well, but we can we can part that out as tail work, which is code for open another issue for the missing piece and we'll push this in and, and the other piece can be worked on some later date, but we can get the main contribution in. Uh, and the use of documentation to set expectations is really important. So uh, as you make decisions about uh, what the project's about and you know what kind of uh, changes will be accepted and not accepted and what the standards are for you know code and style and and, and whatever um, updating documentation uh, really helps uh, your contributors and success is when people feel good about participating 
Uh, so with that, uh, this is my screenshot of Americana and that's where I'll stop and uh, let's have a conversation. <laughs>